Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In this in-process model kit review, we are looking at Hasegawa's classic 148 scale Hawker Typhoon Mark 1B. And this is Hasegawa kit number JT592400. We are going to be looking at the built-up kit and the progress that I've made so far. I will talk about the kit instructions and we'll go through those, the assembly sequence. We'll also look at the kit decals and the quality on those. We'll take a look at the clear parts and some of the options that are available in this kit. We will also look at the surface detailing on the kit. I will talk about any aftermarket parts I used on this build. And we'll take a look at any potential problem areas in this kit and my suggestions in how to deal with those. As of this video, this is the only Typhoon Mark 1B in 148 scale available. And in this review, we'll be answering the question, even though this kit was released in 1998, is it still a decent kit? Looking at the instructions, step one really covers the interior and the assembly of the interior. A decal is provided for the instrument panel. And we'll take a look at what's visible through the canopy here. I did add some Edward photo etch seat belts to the interior and those look really nice. Step two really covers the only problematic area of this kit and specifically that is the mounting of parts J4, J2, and J1 to the fuselage halves. I would highly recommend mounting those parts separately to each fuselage half and then joining the fuselage halves together. Take your time on these parts dry fit them, try to get the fit as good as possible because you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning up these parts prior to paint. Unfortunately, the join lines do not fall on natural panel lines and so they need to be filled and then the panel lines that are there and supposed to be there need to be rescribed. Step three is just installing the upper wings to the lower wing. I deviated from this step by actually gluing the upper wings to the fuselage first to get an excellent wing to fuselage join. Step four just covers mounting the wings to the fuselage and the tail planes to the fuselage. This went fine. Steps five and six just cover the landing gear and gear doors on the kit. We'll take a look at some of these detail parts. The gear doors themselves are relatively simple, but they look nice. They'll look good with some paint and weathering on them. These are the landing gear legs. These will really turn out nice as well. There's not an excessive amount of detail in the landing gear bays, but again, with some detail painting, this should look fine. In step seven, we're just adding some more detail parts. In steps eight and nine, we're just assembling the bombs and the main wheels. And the detail on the main wheels looks nice. I like the fact that these are flat spotted already. In step 10, we're just adding the bombs, the wheels, and the cannons to the kit. Step 11 covers the prop, and step 12 covers installing the clear parts. And you just want to make sure which option you want to do if you want to pose the canopy open or closed. The clear parts themselves are very clear. They look nice. I like the option to pose the canopy open if desired you can see there's decent clarity through the clear parts here into the finished cockpit. Taking a look at the decals, all of these really look nice. There's only a couple of white decals and they're kind of the typical Hasegawa cream, but there's so few on this kit, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Moving on to the marking and painting guide, there are two marking options. The first marking option is for an aircraft flown from number 175 squadron. There are quite a few historical photos of this aircraft online, and those would be a helpful reference. And the second option is an aircraft from number 198 squadron. The marking guide also has plan views of the upper and lower surfaces of the aircraft. And this is pretty clear, it's just a matter of taking your time painting and decaling the aircraft. Looking at the surface detailing on the kit, what is there is very nice, it's very consistent, it's petite, it will look good under a coat of paint. I wouldn't mind a little bit more rivet detail, but it's a simple kit and you can add some of that detail with your weathering techniques at a later point. In conclusion, 
I think this is still a really nice kit. I've had a lot of fun building it up to this point and I really look forward to finishing it. Really the only problem areas to watch out for on this aircraft are the inserts that are just below the cockpit canopy. There's really no getting around this. They simply need to be installed as best as possible and then filled and sanded until you get a nice finish here and the original panel lines rescribe. The decals look excellent. The instructions are clear and easy to follow. The clear parts on the kit have very nice clarity. The detail on the interior is nice as well. And the overall kit really should turn out nice. It's not a heavy parts count in this kit. This is certainly an appropriate kit for somebody with a few kits under their belt. Well, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built Hasegawa's Typhoon Mark 1B, please feel free to share in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, model on.